Hey guys, welcome back, Orbomb here, bringing you another one of our live deck profiles. Today we're going over the Ludicolo deck you guys saw in that Ludicolo versus Buzzball video. I know a lot of people were recommending that I play Ludicolo. I think Ludicolo is really cool. Um, in my opinion, just like I've talked about in previous decks, H2s are still a little bit harder to play. Although, I'm, I'm kind of like... The only stage two deck I'm kind of excited about is like Gardevoir, just because you have access to Sylveon GX. But uh, that aside, to, in my opinion, I think uh, stage twos are a little bit more difficult to play. But because of Ludicolo's ability to draw every turn, this one, this deck might be uh, might be an exception. Who knows? Maybe it's just a couple cards short from being really good. Maybe my deck is just really bad. Who knows, right? But um, this is a good little play, a good little way to start off of start off as. And I know a lot of people have had some comments recently about about that like like you guys understand that this is just my premature list something we threw together right away so that we can get videos for you guys because i know you guys love the content and i appreciate all y'all for the support for it. don't forget to drop a like if you guys have not already uh subscribe to all the jazz um answer the common question today for a chance to win some celestial storm codes because i got a couple we're ready to start passing them out to you lovely viewers um what's the common question today let's see Oh, you know, I asked this in the live deck match too. Uh, you know what? I should ask the same question. Hmm. I don't know. What's your common question today? Bro, what's your favorite pizza place? I'm hungry. I haven't had pizza in months. I kind of want pizza, but like, I don't want to spend the money on pizza. <laughs> I don't know, man. That, that aside, let me know in the comments down below what your favorite pizza place is. We are playing four. Oh, also, I switched locations a little bit. This place should have a little bit less glare, but the light might be a little bit dimmer. Uh, so I do apologize about that. And hopefully there isn't, it's a little bit echo, more echoey here too, but hopefully that shouldn't be an issue. But between my color correction editing and my audio editing, I should be okay, but we'll have to see. Anyways, we're playing the 60 HP low tad. It's actually pretty interesting with the surprise attack. Uh, it could, you know, actually take your opponent by surprise if they have only one card left in their hand. It says, choose a random card from your opponent's hand. Your opponent reveals their hands or shovels into their deck. So it's a good way, like, if your opponent gets sloppy and starts only leaving one card in their hand, you could actually use surprise and keep them with a, with a no a hand card. I have done that once or twice in a in some testing, which is really funny. I am playing two Lombre. Uh, Lombre has 80 HP. Like, the whole problem with this line is that the HP is a little bit too low, but... It's actually pretty interesting as far as like its attacks go. But Lombre is pretty cool because you have the ability Aqua Lift. If this Pokemon has any water energy attached to it, it has no retreat cost. So free retreat is always good, especially in this meta where we don't have Floatstone. So having access to cards that have that ability is always really good. Let me actually uh, trade this out real quick. It should be less glary. Maybe, maybe I'm just lying. Who knows, right? <laughs> and of course we are playing three of our Ludicolo. I don't have any of the English ones yet, but we got our Ludicolos here. Ludicolo has the ability to just draw a card. Once per turn, you can draw a card. And you can stack it so you can draw three cards uh, if you have all three Ludicolo up. But its attack is cool as well. So it's like a it's like a budget Zoark, right? It's not as good as Zoark, but and it's also a stage two, so like it's it's inferior to Zoark. But you do have um you aren't a GX, which is good. Which means people can increase damage by with uh with um with choice bad. Oh, excuse me. And you're weak to lightning, which is good, because there's not really any lightning attackers in the format. So, oh, oh, sorry for bumping the mic, uh, the camera there. But his attack is for a water DC, the 70 plus 10 more damage for each Pokemon in play, excluding your opponent's Pokemon. So let's, 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 let's do some math real quick, right? Say that you have your five Pokemon on your bench. That means you're hitting for five more damage. Your opponent's always going to have one Pokemon they're active, which means you're hitting for always 60 more damage, which means you're constantly hitting for 130, 160 with a choice ban. The problem is that... The, your opponent will never only have one Pokemon that are active because they could lose. You never know when you could pull out the surprise Kikui, right? Which is something I was playing in this deck, but I took it out. And it's something I really want to play in this deck. I'm going to talk about this deck, about how many cards I want to add. And there's so many more things I want to throw in this deck, but uh, space is an issue. And, you know, you guys can give suggestions down below where you would cut, where you would add, things like that. Because I really like a lot of the cards in this deck. Uh, but a lot of, I've, have, I've been having issues with prizing them a lot. Like important cards, like Vulpix and stuff like that. So... But anyways, that side. But anyways, if your opponent has another Pokemon on their bench, that means you're hitting for 170. If they have two Pokemon on their bench, it's 180, 190, so on and so forth. Now, I played this against Buzzwool, which was definitely not this card's best matchup because Buzzwool doesn't need a lot of cards on their bench. But imagine this card against like a Malmar deck or a Zoark deck or anything along the lines of those cards. Like you'll be hitting for much bigger numbers. Um, than you would be hitting against like the Buzzwool deck. Buzzwool is a little awkward because they could always only have two cards on their bench, which I'll never take an Oko with 
this, but that's why we play the Deoxys in this deck, which is another card I wanted to play two of, or even a second stretcher, but I couldn't fit them in. And it was really, really something I wish I did put fit in for that video. But Ludicolo, the only downside to Ludicolo, in my opinion, is the fact that you have 140 HP. It's actually an extremely low number, but it is a good number because it's not a number that a lot of decks can hit. Like even, uh, even uh, Zoark with Devoured Field only hits 130, and that's a number they try to target a lot. So. Uh, although it is a low number, it's still a good number. We are playing two Slugma. Slugma has nothing really interesting about it. Magma Rise at first attack means they can't retreat, I guess. But it's 70 HP, but it does have an awkward two retreat cost, which I, which is kind of bad. Usually these stage ones only have a one retreat cost, or these basics have a one retreat cost, but it's fine. And two Macargo. Macargo is a brand new, incredibly broken card <laughs> in decks like Zoark and uh, Ludicolo, for that matter. The cargo has the ability smooth over. Once during your turn, you may put you may search your card for you search your deck for a card, shuffle your deck, and put that card on top. So combine that with Ludicolo, and you can draw literally any card you want in your deck. It's literally a Tem, Yugimoto, Heart of the Cards, the Pharaoh, that kind of level of garbage. <laughs> it's a really, really strong uh, in a deck like Ludicolo. And obviously it does take up deck space. That four slots kind of sucks, but because you're only drawing one card at a time, I do think having Macargo is, ne is, ne is a necessity in this deck because you need to be able to draw exactly what you need to pull off your combo. It's also good for helping you evolve into a bunch of Ludicolos as well. As far as the other cards, we are playing two Leles, something I really wanted to play three of. Desperately wanted to play three of, because not only is it just, you know, a good card, but uh, it does help fill up your bench, which is something you do want to do a lot in this deck, is just fill up your bench as much as possible so your Ludicolo can hit for those max numbers. Another card I wanted to play two of was Vulpix and um, Deoxys. Uh, Vulpix because, you know, using early turn beacons is really strong, helps you get your Pokemon out, helps you get Leles. Uh, it's really, really, really useful in this deck. Plus it's a water type, so you can get it out with Brooklyn Hill. Uh, Deoxys is good for the, um, for the Buzzwell matchup. Pretty much only the buzzable matchup this is card maybe i don't want to add two of these but i do want a second stretcher because it's so easy to pull out our cards with mccargo and ludicolo um second stretcher seems to be good as, as well um but i definitely wish i had two vulpix because having your vulpix prize kind of sucks a lot so also last card we're playing is one tapu kogo bromo now this one is a card that's debatable i it's been extremely useful because of its free retreat i'm talking like these pokemon are low hp pokemon they get knocked out very easily and you can't you can't always guarantee that you're gonna have a pokemon that's good to set up because all these pokemon have awkward retreat costs and you usually want to be attaching to your ludicolos every turn but having tapu coco is really good because of that free retreat but flying flip is good as well because um sometimes numbers are a little bit awkward to hit as we just discussed earlier with the buzzle matchup so having tapu coco's flying flip is really, really useful in a lot of different scenarios. Uh, especially if you're playing against Malamar, sometimes Flying Flip could just be hilarious and just winning you games. So I do like the top of Coco. It was originally Kikui. The problem was I didn't want to play Kikui. A lot of the turns I would rather play things like Cynthia or Copycat or Guzma and Judge and stuff like that. So although it is something I could that you could put back in the deck, once again, we just need to figure out deck space. But that's gonna be the Pokemon line. Let's go ahead and go over tools, items, stadiums, and things like that. I decided to put them all into one slide because, you know, why not? I am playing, it makes more sense as far as my explanation too. I'm playing two Brooklets, not three, only two. Uh, we don't really have to worry about bumping stadiums too much. And uh, two Brooklets seems to be fine because we're also playing Nest Balls. I know that may sound a little bit confusing, but I'll go over that in a second. We're also playing three Choice Bands, something I know I wish I had four of as well, but unfortunately we only had room for three, so we are playing three Choice Bands. Um, Four Ultra Balls, standard stuff. Uh, let's see if I can try to fit this all into one screen. Oh, I keep bumping things. We bump the mic now as well. It says I'm such a small, I, I need to take a picture. I'll probably take a picture and post on Instagram later of what my setup looks like. <laughs> but anyways, four Ultra Balls, standard stuff. Three Rare Candies, I wish it was four. Three seems to be fine though. Uh, two Nest Balls. Now I am playing a combination of Nest Ball and Brooklyn Hill because Nest Ball gets you your Deoxys, your Tapu Koko, and your Slugma, which is really, really, really important. Uh, I like Brooklyn Hill because it's like a consistent Nest Ball. A lot of the time people don't bump stadiums anymore, so Brooklyn Hill can stick. So I'm gonna be constantly getting out Ludicolo and Vulpix, or not Ludicolo, uh, Lotad and Vulpix. Uh, but Nest Ball is just as important because not only does it help you quickly, quickly, quickly get out a full bench, but it also helps you get out the select ones that are kind of important as well. So that's why I'm playing the two Nest Balls as well. But like I said, that line could be played around with if you guys like 
if you guys don't like that idea. Uh, two Aqua Patches, once another card I wish I had four of, but we have to stick with two for the time being because of deck space. Uh, this is where I wish I had more copies of cards, like Vulpix and Coco. I wish I had two of because the free retreat with Coco is great. The free uh, the ability to use Beacon is great with Vulpix. So those two cards I wish I had more of. Um, I wish I had more Aqua Patch and I really wish I had more Stretcher because Pokemon will be knocked out when you have low HP. Like, because you literally have 60 HP numbers all over the board. So having two stretchers would be really good to constantly be getting out your low tads again, be getting out your Deoxys for the matchup and stuff like that. Um, but once again, cuts need to be made. Uh, so I do, this is this is what I'm rocking with right now. But as you can see, as I'm already talking and there's like Tapu Koko, uh, Stretcher, two more Aqua Patches, uh, Vulpix, and a vault and a co and a choice man. That's six cards I want to add to the deck. If you, especially if you're not counting like the another rare candy, which is seven. Like that's a lot of cards. But I think that's as that's, that's it as far as everything I want to add to the deck. That's really all I care about adding are those seven cards. But seven cards is a lot of cards. It's not exactly easy to make space for seven extra cards because then you have to cut out complete strategies, and that's not something we want to do. But that's a, that's the issue. That's the difference between playing Ludicolo and playing. Um, Zoric or something. Sure, Zoric is a GX, gives two prizes. It's hard. It's easier to knock out Zoric uh, if you're playing fighting type attackers, and uh, Zoric is just like it's easier to disrupt with its enhanced hammers and stuff like that. Um, but Ludicolo has the added effect of being able to abuse cards like Aqua Patch, non GX can hit more numbers than Zoric can, and so like it's it's kind of like a balance. I don't know. I don't know which one I like more. I probably think I will like Zoark more because of Zoark and Zoark is broken. But <clears throat> let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Now, th this is a really cool budget deck, especially now that we're getting that Lele as a promo box coming out soon, which means a lot of people will be able to play um, budget decks like these easier because Lele will soon. Oh, I think Lele right now is already dropped in price uh, dramatically. So if you guys want to pick up your Leles, now is the time to do it. Definitely get yourself three. You need three for this new meta, but we are playing four Guzma as we're going on to the supporters here. Standard, four Guzma, four Cynthia. Now, something I do really like in this deck that I am playing is three Judge. Three Judge is so cool because not only is Judge disruptive, but when you combine it with Ludicolo, you're able to refill your hand to get exactly what you need using Ludicolo and Cargo. So I don't think I'd ever play less than three Judge in this deck because of how useful it is to disrupt your opponent, uh, especially seeing how you're a Ludicolo deck. Now, because drawing is so important, I am begrudgingly playing <laughs> to two copycats. Uh, copycat has been a little bit more useful as of late in my testing. I'm sure your opponent can play around it, but um, I do like copycat a little bit more as a draw supporter, mainly because it's like, it's it just kind of is, it's to me, it's like playing two more Cynthia's uh, cause a lot of the time you're just gonna use copycat early game and shuffle draw six. That way you can save your Cynthia's for later in the game. Uh, so that's why I am uh, playing with two copycats, you know, even though I'm a huge advocate against copycat, I think two is still decent until we get a better draw supporter in the future, because all we really have right now is Lily, which is a stage two deck that plays a couple of energy in it. I don't like playing Lily in decks that have cards that can easily clutter up your hand. So there's no Lily in this deck. And uh, Lily would be like the thing I would play over copycat in most decks, but for the time being, not super great in this deck. And we have cards like Sophocles, and I don't think Sophocles is super good in this deck. You don't really want to discard very often. It's easy enough to discard uh, water energies just through retreating and using Ultra Ball. I haven't had any issues discarding water energies, so Sophocles is not that great to me. And not to mention, we only play two Aqua Patches, so it's not even like super necessary to discard the water energies very quickly. And we are playing one Volkner. It's literally just to be a Skylight to get you rare candy. Uh, sometimes it can get you Choice Band and stuff like that. I think it can get you any item. Yeah, it's any item, so. Um, Volkner is there to act like a fourth rare candy that's easier to get. Volkner is the reason why I want to play three Leleys. I've been comfortable without playing three Leleys. It would be nice to play three Leleys, but for the time being, I haven't had too much issue setting up my uh, Ludicolos. There's only one in 10 games where I wasn't able to set up my Ludicolo and just gotten lost because of it. But in every other game, I've been able to set up my Ludicolos by at least turn three. So setting up Ludicolos isn't the hard part. The hard part is um, streamlining attackers and you know, not having your stuff priced. I think that was the biggest issue for me because when I was playing against Buzzwell, I think I had Deoxys prized three games and Vulpix prized four games. Cause we played a thick, I wanna say, we did like four best of threes. 
So it's assuming that I lost, I didn't lose all the games, but assuming that I lost the games, each one, that's like eight games. So in the eight games, I definitely think that I had Deoxys prized three times. Vulpix definitely was prized like four times. Vulpix was prized so often for me and it's been, it just completely ruins strategy sometimes because you need to be able to beacon to get out a bunch of Pokemon, but I digress. Uh, that's why I want to add higher copies of these cards. But we are playing, of course, four DCEs and uh, not too many water energies. It's not super necessary since there's only one energy attachment. We are playing seven water energies. That seems to be good, though, in my opinion. Uh, with 11 energies in the deck, you're usually able to attach every turn. Um, and with the combination of Ludicolo and the cargo, you're able to get these cards a lot easier. Uh, that's the cool thing about this deck is how easy it is for you to get all the cards. But overall, I do like the deck. I definitely think the deck is good. Uh, in my opinion, I feel like it needs... My list, my list is definitely needs optimization, in my opinion, because I do want to add higher counts of these cards. Maybe it was just because I was playing as Buzzle that I'm like, I really wish I had another, uh, another, uh, what's it called? The Oxus, uh, Captivating Pokepuff. <laughs> oh, man. Nah, I don't think I'd pick Captivating Pokepuff. Um, if there was another way to get Pokemon from your opponent's hand to their, uh, to, or their discard pile onto their bench, that'd be another card I play. Like, imagine, I know we have that new Bayonet. Uh, in this sweat that whenever you evolve into Bayonet, you can put a Pokemon from the discount pile onto their bench. That'd be really strong if it wasn't a stage two. Like, it'd be cool if we had a basic that had abilities like that. That'd be pretty dope, but... Or like an item, because I know we used to have something like that. I forgot what the item was called, but I know there was an item that used to do that. Uh, if we had cards like that, this, this like I said, this, this deck is one or two cards away from being able to do really, really well. Because if we had like an item like that card, we'd be able to knock out Buzzwolves a lot easier. Because Buzzwolves is going to want to have an attacker in the active. Um, they sometimes, a lot of these decks are forced to play Lele, which is another card that they have in the bench. Uh, Buzzle is also going to want to have Diancie so that they can hit that 180 number with the, with the beast energy. Uh, that, that 80 number with the beast energy. Because otherwise they whiff knockouts because they only hit 50. Um, or they only hit 60, which will knock them out, which will knock out the Vulpix, but won't knock out Slugmas and stuff like that. So they're going to want these cards on their bench. Not to mention other attackers because they have to be constantly attaching. So they're going to want these cards on their bench, but they can control a lot easier than other decks can. While decks like Rayquaza, <laughs> Rayquaza is like, Rayquaza you can actually do really well against if you can manage to evolve. Because hitting 180 against Rayquaza is, is a cakewalk, bro. It's a cakewalk. So um, uh, Rayquaza is pretty decent. Uh, Malamar is pretty decent. What else is decent? Zoark is pretty decent. Hitting 210 is not that great against Zoark though, because uh, Max, let's just say they have four Pokemon on their bench, which is what they're probably gonna have. Four plus five, that's nine. They're gonna have one in the active, that's 10, which means you're hitting for 170. With a choice band, that's 200. So they need to have a full bench for you to knock them out, but that's where the Coco promo comes in. One flying flip means it's so much easier for you to knock out everything on their board, which is why I love playing the Coco promo. Because you literally just need that one turn of flying flip in your set. And if they don't have a full bench of, ten, of five, they can't Oko your flying flip. Your, your Coco, I mean. So there's, there's, the added, there's that added benefit as well. So that covers a lot of the more competitive decks, I want to say. I'm just trying to think of like what else is really, really, really good. Like Zoric is good, Buzzwell is good, Rayquaza is good, Malamar is good. Uh, that's everything I can think of in standard, especially in the new standard. Mm, I'm just trying to think. What else have I recorded? Well, regardless, a lot, of, most of these other decks involve having a big bench, so that's what I'm saying. Like Ludicolo has a time to shine, but just because of how the matchup was, I didn't get to shine it as much as I would like, but. Definitely give Ludicolo a try and let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Definitely don't forget to drop a like though, subscribe to all the good jazz. Answer the common question of the day being, what is your favorite pizza place? If you guys convince me, I might get myself a pizza that day. Who knows? I do like me some pizza. Uh, <laughs> drop a like, subscribe to all the good jazz, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.